Welcome into the CHGO Blackhawks podcast powered by ComEd. It's getting easier for your business to switch to electric vehicles. Learn more at comed.com slash clean. Thanks for being with us. Mario's getting adjusted. Right on time for the show to begin. <laughs> good? All good? We're good? I'm getting poked on the arm by Greg's side table here. Don't blame my so table. It's your, your chair's fault. I don't want to get poked in the arm. Manly, trim that side table. <laughs> Thanks for being with us. Smash that like nice. button for us on the YouTube page. Subscribe there as well. Same deal on the podcast app. Subscribe, rate, review, all those good things. We've got a mailbag show for you today. Yeah. And we have a crap ton to get to. Mm-hmm. Uh, real quick before we do, uh, it is finally kind of out there in the public, so we should acknowledge it as well. The reason that Kevin Korczynski has not been with the team is his father passed away. Uh, that's why he's been away from the team. From what I understand, kind of suddenly, kind of unexpectedly, um, pretty young guy by today's standards. 64 years old. Yeah, so that's, that's yeah. where Kevin Korczynski has been. Um, you know, so I know he'll have all the support of the organization. He'll have all the time he needs. Uh, but when you hear personal matter and you see a guy away as long as he's been, your mind kind of starts to go there anyway. And now we have confirmation. Actually, the Saskatoon Blades... Uh, put out the tweet, we're devastated to hear of the passing of Saskatoon Blades alumnus Larry Korchinski on behalf of the entire Saskatoon Blades organization. We give our deepest condolences to the Korchinski family. Once a blade, always a blade. So uh, tough news. Uh, obviously, our thoughts are with the Korchinski family, and hopefully he takes all the time he needs to mm-hmm. get back and, and play hockey whenever he's ready. Yeah, um, you know, it's losing... A father is is bad. You know, I I've unfortunately had to go through that, and in my situation, it was something that was expected. It was coming, uh, but it's I, I I found that getting back into your everyday routine as quickly as possible kind of makes things feel normal. Helps again. a little bit. So, yeah, yeah. You know, everybody's different, but hopefully, uh, you know, Kevin takes as much time as he needs and be there for his family. And when he's ready, you know, team's not going anywhere. Take right. your time. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, let's uh, fire up the questions here, Sarah. Who do we got first? Let's start with the diehards. So we got Charlie the Bacon Guy first. Oh, oh I've heard of him. him. Never heard of him. <laughs> he must be My, new. It says, yeah, uh, it. <laughs> yeah, you want to do it, Mario, with, since you have young eyes? <laughs> I mean, Sarah's right there, but okay. Uh, is there, oh, oh, thank there we you. Go. Now, full screen, yeah. <laughs> old man screen up now. <laughs> is there any benefit to sitting Bedard down with... Kyle Davidson and Luke and saying we need more leadership on the ice from you or something to that effect. If he's holding guys accountable on the ice, do you think that would be met with open arms or cold shoulders from teammates? I think that's a fair question because all the assumption is that next year Bedard is the captain of this team and a big reason why veteran leadership and long standing statues of the or pillars of the organization, Patrick Kane and Jonathan Taze aren't around. Part of the reason for that is so that the new young group of leadership could find their voice and find their legs within the organization. And Connor Bedard is the key focal point to that. Um, to ask a 18 and 18 year old player less than 30 games into the season to say, you need to be the leader on and off the ice of this locker room is a lot to ask yeah. and i think it's it is a lot to ask but i also think given where this team is i don't know who you who else you turn to in the locker room because Corey perry was supposed to be that guy he's gone taylor hall was supposed to be someone who could do that he's not playing this year uh nick felino is there we all like him i think he's can't be just i think him. he's respected in the locker room it can't just be him Connor Murphy's a guy that's respected in the locker room and around the league, but 
on the ice production. Also, I think I, I think you'd be naive to say some players around the locker room don't also look at like, yeah, well, you're not really helping us either, you know, kind of thing. I honestly, I don't know if Seth Jones is the uh, type of player in a le- uh, pr- player in a leadership role in which he's the vocal guy. So I don't really know who you go to. And, and if, if Bedard is your captain in waiting, he might have to be put into that role before it's absolutely necessary. Uh, yeah, I've, I mean, the leadership on the ice is kind of a very vague thing. Like, do you want him out there yelling at guys? You want him grab, you know, pulling Brent Seabrooks and running over to the penalty box? All the t- I mean... I don't know. I, I think leadership on the ice is leading by example, and I think he does a lot of that already, you know, the, with his work ethic yeah. and with his production. Um, and I think as far as, like, becoming the team leader, the guy, you just got to let that happen organically, and it will. I mean, he's no dummy. He knows exactly what the situation is. He's just trying to get used to playing in the NHL right now, and he's adapting well. And as the season goes on, I think we'll see – you know, more of that stuff come out, maybe getting more of him getting in the ear of other guys now that he's getting more acclimated and becoming more comfortable and probably realizes, all right, this is my team. This is my team this year. It's going to be my team as long as I'm here. Just let it happen organically. I mean, Connor Bedard starting to scream at guys and and stuff. What does that accomplish right now? It's also, look, like, it's also not his personality. You've got to let these guys lead the way they lead. And just like Jonathan Taves was leader by example and Brent Seabrook was the vocal leader, everyone's got a different style. And and for anyone to go to, to Connor Bedard or whoever, random Blackhawk X, and say, we need you specifically to be a leader, it, I, it doesn't, it's not that, I don't think it's that simple. Where a guy can just be like, okay, I'm a leader now. Yeah. Hey, you, you suck. Work harder. Listen to me. Shoot, right. score it's, next time. Yeah, you, just, it's, you hope that you see a guy like Bedard work as hard as he does, which we see it. We're at practice all the time. He's the last guy off the ice. He is doing extra drills when the practice is over. Like He is always there working to get better. And when he's not officially playing hockey, he's unofficially playing hockey. It's all he wants to do. Now, if guys on the team can't see that and follow his lead or feel inspired by that, that's not on Bedard. That's on the other players. And that's what you need to evaluate. It's not whether or not Bedard can lead. It's whether or not the other guys on the team are willing to be led. And I think that's the problem we're seeing with the team right when now. You, it's kind of like, you know, what made Jonathan Taves the great leader he was? He did all the small things. He did all the extra stuff. And when your best player in the team is doing all that extra, all those little things the attention to detail, then everybody on the team needs to be doing that. That's how leadership is is uh, done. It's not just a guy standing up there and rah rahing and yeah. saying, hey, you need to go here and you need to go here. No, that's the coach's job. Leadership is leading by example, and you're starting to see some of that. Yeah. Like Kevin Korchinski is, is always attached to, to Bedard at the end of practices and some other guys as the season has gone on it's been Bedard's the only guy out there we're waiting for Bedard now it's Korchinski Vlasic is starting to do that like the guys that matter that are going to be around yeah. are starting to follow his lead if you know Colin Blackwell or Jared Tenorti doesn't want to follow his lead that's fine those guys are not going to be here when this team is competitive again so the right guys are starting to notice and following his lead, and that's that's the important part. All right. Next. Who is this? Radio Maverick 24? Yeah. Uh, can you zoom in on that for oh, me, yeah. Sarah? Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it says, realistically, to help ensure Bedard continues his growth, do the Blackhawks need to make a trade to get a player capable of playing on his level since Hall is out? Um, interesting that you mentioned that. Today, um, Mark Lazarus published a piece for The Athletic. It was an interview, a Q&A, with Kyle Davidson that happened before the game against Seattle. Um, and he answered it, so I'll just tell you what he said. He said, it's definitely something we're always talking about. At this point, it's really hard. Some other teams are willing to pay some serious pieces that, frankly, they just don't care about now, meaning they, they don't care about the contract now, but we do care about them. And that's the tough part. We're not in a position to do that. Having said that, you're always going to be looking to maybe enhance some things 
Uh, I will say he also added that he didn't think it was urgent, and he said that another problem that they have is once the team starts to get healthier, if they start bringing in guys, like I saw someone mention Vinny Henestrosa just got waived, they bring in Vinny Henestrosa, and then other guys start getting healthy. What do you do with this glut of guys now? Like, I think here's what I think Kyle Davidson is doing, and it's what he's been doing since day one. His eyes are open for opportunities. If an opportunity that makes sense in the context of the rebuild presents itself, he will jump at that opportunity. I think Beauvillier is a good example of that. You're able to get a guy that is helpful for cheap, that doesn't derail the rebuild, isn't cost you know prohibitive for years down the road. I think that you'll probably see a big, he kind of addressed this too, like a bigger free agent, longer term move this summer. But bring in Henestrosa or Jacob Verona or whichever waived player you want to name doesn't really move the needle for them this year at all. No, and Vinny Henestrosa, we know what Vinny Henestrosa is. He's been here twice. I mean, he's another guy. He's a, he's a, he's a uniform filler at this point. Um, I, you know, Davidson, he's got his plan and he's patient and he's got amazing patience. I mean, I'm sure there have been many times other GMs have been like, screw it, we got to go get this guy, this guy, this guy. He's sticking to his plan. We got to let it play out. The urgency is is right. Yes, Conor Bedard definitely can use some more talent around him. But it's not as easy as just saying, we'll go out and trade for somebody. It doesn't really yeah. work that way because... It takes two to tango. As you I just ma- invented that. Like right, we invented that's mailbag a great shows. phrase. We yep. should put that on our shirt. Um, <laughs> but you need... No one, if you're going to trade a guy and, and bring in a guy, as you mentioned, it causes a log jam on the roster. So, and no one's going to want like anything from your NHL roster right now to swap it out. So you're going to give up assets for a half a season of a veteran, a season and a half of a veteran. It needs to make sense for the, for the big picture of the term. And yes, it, it does suck that this team can only score one goal a night. And it does suck that Connor Bedard has to do everything by himself. But this is the reality of where it is between injuries and roster decisions. It is what it is. And yeah. I don't think there's a lot of teams out there that A, are looking to move guys, and B, are like going to bend over backwards and be like, oh, let's go help the Blackhawks. Let's go help Connor Bedard get better. Yeah, like it's, you're, it's you're, you don't have teams that are going to give up players like that. And if you did, it was gonna it's going to cost you something. And the Blackhawks are not in a position currently to be, uh, you know, jumping the gun to get rid of future assets or future prospects or picks or whatever. Like they're just not in that position. No, the guys who are going to be available are Anthony Beauvillier. Yeah. Right, he gave up pretty him. much nothing to get him, and. He's here. He's here, and he's a guy. Like, yeah, he brought he might, his he, he, he brought might. his equipment and skates and everything. Yeah, he didn't have to didn't have to buy him new skates, and he can play. And <laughs> maybe every seven or eight games, get a point. But those are the type of guys that are available right now. Yeah, but I think it is. I think that you should take away from this though that he is willing. Right. It's just not possible He's at the moment. He's not going to trade for the sake of trading. Right. It has yeah. to make sense for the it's long term. It's not going to do anything to just placate, like, see, I did something. Yeah. Right. Like, what does that accomplish? But he, I, I also think he's not. He's also not just dug in and saying, I'm not doing anything right now. Right, right. If something comes that makes sense, I think he'll, I think he'll, he'll do it. The, There's, the Bavilia trade, I mean, that was out of necessity. Yeah. You, mm-hmm. you lost Taylor Hall and Corey Perry on the same day. He's like, well, I got to do something. Right. This guy's out there. Obviously, he didn't just call up the Canucks that day on his way to the Corey Perry press conference and say, hey, got anybody <laughs> for me? They'd obviously been talking about that for a while. But, you know, those are the types of deals that happen at this time of the year when it's a team looking to get rid of a guy that's just taking up a spot. Right. Six, seven, All right. Nine, 10, 11, 12. Next one. 13, Mario's counting. 14, I want to see what he's counting. 15 <laughs> restricted or unrestricted free agents on this roster currently. Yeah. 15. Yeah. There's a lot of money moving out. Next year's or team is going to look a lot different. Going to be re-signed, and that's just so much more cap space to be used in free agency. So when William Nylander hits free agency or Steven Stamkos hits free agency or the Leafs sign Nylander and say, uh-oh, now we can't afford all these guys. Mitch Marner's on the block now or whatever. Like 
that's where that's where help yes. is likely going to come from. Yes, yep. help's going to come from within, and help over the next come uh, over the next couple of summers. Like, like, what's the point of of giving up assets to win three more games this year? Exactly. Nailed it. All right. Yep. All right. We got Brad Beatty. Beatty. Yeah. Yeah. Saying that sure. right. Yeah. He says, you mentioned on the post game. Greg, you should read this one because it's addressed to you. Oh, yeah. it's addressed Okay, to I Greg. can do that. <laughs> you mentioned, I mentioned on the post game show that their identity is take nights off, easy to play against, opposite of what they want to be. How is that fixed? Because long term, that will be a problem if that continues with these guys that will be here. Well, if I knew how to fix it, I wouldn't be sitting <laughs> here. I'd be sitting behind the bench of the Chicago Blackhawks or some NHL team. That's the million dollar question. Now, as I said last night, the good thing is. A lot of these guys that you're worried about being passengers that are taking nights off, they're not going to be here. Some of them beyond this year. Some yeah. of them might not be here in late March. Mm -hmm. Like those aren't the, like it's not Connor Bedard taking nights off. It's not Alex Vlasic or Kevin Korchinski taking nights off. You know, it's it, Isaac Phillips plays hard every yeah. time he's out there. He might not play great, but he plays hard. He's doing what you want him to do. You know. Tyler Johnson wants to take a night off. Taylor Radish wants to be a passenger for two weeks. I don't care. Those guys aren't going to be here yeah. when this team is in a playoff game again. So, yeah, these young guys could pick up the bad habits, but that's why you're seeing, like, Korchinski and Bedard are buddies and Vlasic and those guys. They're kind of bonding because they know mm -hmm. they could see the room. They're not idiots. They can say, we're the core we're the guys that matter, so let's just, if we got to do it ourselves, we'll do it ourselves. It's not the young guys who matter that you're questioning effort on a nightly basis for yeah. the most part. I think the, the, the concern is the culture surrounding them and the, the, the habits that they are either lear learning by proxy or are seen around them. I think that's that's the concern. So if you have the veterans who are there to quote unquote set the tone and the tone being said is like, you know, not, not giving a hundred percent, not buying into systems, taking nights off, anything like that. Then you worry about the young players being around that, but they're here out of necessity. So they have to overcome the potential bad habits that are being um, seen. In, and they're in, in 18, games. 19, 20 years old. Those are the types of players that are, if they start to develop bad habits are still coachable. Yeah, they're still young enough that those bad habits can be. You'd like to think so, yeah. Changed into good habits, um, so you know, when when we start having multiple games of Connor Bedard half-assing it, or I think Alex Vlasic, no, or Alex yeah. Vlasic just you know mailing it in, then I really get concerned. But when it's guys that don't matter to the big picture. Yeah, it's it's not fun to watch, and you 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 want better, but oh well, go be a passenger somewhere else next year. Well, actually, this is came up in Lazarus's Q and A with uh, Davidson too, just about uh, accountability for guys that are not playing well or playing hard. And and Davidson said, "quote At some point, you have to run your team as a meritocracy, and if some guys just aren't getting it done, other players have to step up in their place. And until you prove that you're the person to get more ice time and a bigger role." That'll happen, but it's hard to build a team concept and a good culture without some accountability there, too. And I think that's what a big part of our point was last night was, look, the losses are one thing. We knew the losses were coming, but the way they're losing is bad. And if you, you know, you want if you're going to preach, we play this style of Blackhawks hockey and this is the expectation and then guys aren't meeting the expectation with no consequence. That's when you start to lose people mm -hmm. where people are like, F it. I'm not. Why should I try? Why should I continue to bust my ass when the guy right next to me on my line isn't and is having the, and and there's no consequences? Yeah. So it's something. Look, I I hope that when Davidson talks and it's been this way so far as a GM for me with him, I feel like he's seeing what we're seeing. He can't flat out say like they sucked or they. He has to be more diplomatic and pol and political about it, but. He knows. He sees it. He and watches Richard, every game. Yeah. While we wait to get into the room at the United Center after every game, the front office walks by. Mm -hmm. Him and Brian Campbell and, and uh, Norma Guy, they all walk by. And on nights that they win, you could tell they're happy. 
They got smiles on their faces. They're fist bumping players as they walk by. On bad nights, Kyle Davidson wears it. You see it in his yeah. face. He's like, he's frustrated too. So they, he knows what's going on. He's got a plan. And Pace Setter says in three years, we'll be cracking jokes about how crap this lineup is. We have a file ready yeah. so. for that. Of Remember when? Remember when Jujar Caro was on the power play? Uh, bring him like, back. <laughs> hey, he's lighting it up for the Iowa while. <laughs> Him and Stinky Guy. Hey, uh, got to take our first break of the show, but stick with us. We've got a bunch more questions to get to. Uh, we want to let you know, though, that it's getting easier for businesses to switch to electric vehicles. That's something we can all get behind for the health of the planet and for the well-being of all of us who share it. Yes, the electric grid is evolving to meet your cleaner energy needs as we all move with confidence towards an electric tomorrow. Whether you have one delivery van or a whole fleet of shipping trucks, ComEd can help guide you to make the changes that make sense. Mario, in your expert opinion mm -hmm. on electric fleets and the grid and all that stuff, what yeah. do you think business owners should do? I do have a uh, uh, master's in grid. Uh, go to ComEd.com slash clean, and you can learn more about resources, fleet rebates, and infrastructure incentives available to help businesses go electric. And if you own a business, don't wait Start making your plan today to switch to electric vehicles. Good for businesses, good for the planet, good for all of us. Go to comed.com slash clean. Did you say comed.com slash clean? I wish you would listen to me, Jay. He yes. Did. I heard it. Comed.com slash clean. Oh, I'm on Go there, there now. now. See how going electric connects us to a better way of doing business and a better future for generations to come. I've seen yeah, it's right now. loud typing going on yeah i'm seeing it right you got, got on, on on wednesday clean. for my loud typing you got loud typing over you there. have a you have your laptops attached to a 1940s typewriter hey <laughs> i like old stuff whoosh, 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 whoosh. that's why you work with us if you don't like old <laughs> stuff you shouldn't come here or whatever that meme is uh you know what's not old winning money with DraftKings. that is fun mm -hmm. and you can Good bet stuff. the action on the ice with DraftKings sportsbook Busy night in the NHL tonight, Ooh, nice. and I've got Ew. this fun little parlay oh. ready oh. to go with. Uh, this is one of those fun, like, pre-made parlays you could bet. Uh, it is Seth, Jar Seth Jarvis, Matthew Barzell, Matt Duchesne, Clayton Keller, all over oh. two and a half shots hmm. in tonight's game. Carolina versus Nashville, Boston versus Islanders, Senators versus Stars, Sharks and Coyotes. Ooh. That's going to be a good one. Uh, that is a plus 869. Nice, nice, uh, nice. odds. Give so me the names again. Who are the players? Seth Jarvis, Matthew Barzal, Matt Duchesne, Clayton Keller, all over two and a half shots. I'll make a prediction. Let's mark this for next show. The one who doesn't do it is Matt Duchesne. Is Matt Duchesne. Yeah, because he's a peen. <laughs> I don't like him. I've never liked him. He's going to screw me. What's, why are all those guys paired together? I know. I have no I, idea. I know it's that just, they like to give little like explanations uh, why or like. If they, probably, do they have like a clever name? I, yeah, I'm what the name it, is called? It was. It was the Friday Night Shots. Oh. Ah, shots <laughs> because shots on goal last game. Jarvis had seven. Barzell, Duchesne, and Keller all had four. Uh, so they've been shooting okay. the puck a lot. There you all go. Right. Okay. There you go. Or Hurley Jarvis. That's the fun all one. Right. So download the app now and use the code CHGO. New customers can get 150 bucks instantly in bonus bets just by betting $5 on any hockey game. That's code CHGO. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official betting partner of the NHL. The crown is yours. <clears throat> all right, here we go. All right, you Bonus got it. bets expire 168 hours after issuance. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 777-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-777 or visit ccpg.org. <laughs> Please play responsible on, half, on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort. 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.com slash hockey for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. NHL and NHL Shield are registered trademarks of the National Hockey League. Copyright NHL 2023. All rights reserved. Whenever I hear that, I can only think of the, the Friends episode. It's like seven, seven, seven. See, they they write out, they've changed the read. I don't they like write that. out the numbers. I hate that. K Max, 
Get the yeah, numbers back in the, the copy. Put the numbers back in there. I oh, can, it's, it's spelled out? It's, all the numbers are spelled out now, and that sucks. It's hard to read. <laughs> it is. Get on that, K-Max. Yeah, I know you're watching. All right, why don't we... Those we got two reading. Super Chats. Why don't we knock these out, too, since people are throwing us money? Uh, P3 Arizona with the $5 Super Chat says, Greetings from Arizona. Hi. First Super Chat, I can't think of a better place for the three of you than Arizona in March. Let's take over the mullet. Three five twenty three. See you then. Mm-hmm. I am down to clown with that big time. That's Let's my go. Need to That's see my uh, huh. more super chats to make that happen. Yeah, uh, they're playing in Denver the night before, so I mean we have access to studios in Denver and Phoenix. Sounds like a perfect road trip. Mm. I think for my birthday. Yeah. Let's make it happen. I think we yeah. crash with uh, Brandon in Denver. Sure. They got room. and then uh, and uh, Craig Morgan will he'll shack us up. Yeah, they can hook us up at uh, Bill Armstrong's house. We'll take a shower at Petey's again, like yeah. we did in. Uh, she doesn't Nashville. know about that. <laughs> Oh, we would love that. So, yes, please, yeah. let's make that happen. We're going to need about 4,000 more Super Chats. We just so had to send 25 right. people to the winter meetings for the White Sox to sign a single player. That's more important. That's why we can't go. <laughs> exactly. And then Brian T. Schlaff, or Bryant Schlaff, says, <laughs> Your guys' thoughts on Philip Roos and his future with the team? I was hyped when we signed him, but he hasn't played much with the Hawks since. Yeah, that was one of those European take a flyer on a guy, see how he works out. I think what you're seeing from Philip Bruce is exactly what you're going to get from him. He's a guy. He is your eighth defenseman, ninth defenseman, and when you're in an injury pickle, he'll get called up. It'll be fun for him to go back to Skleftia. Yeah. That's why, like, when, uh, who was it, Uh, Broberg in Edmonton came up, Mm -hmm. people were like, oh, go after him. And, and, like, to me, Philip Bruce for Broberg would have been the ideal swap, two guys that aren't, fitting in with their current teams let them get a change of scenery uh, i know i know yeah, edmonton does thinks Bruce they want. have an nhl future does broberg have an nhl future i think he has a better shot sure but i mean edmonton's not going to get a lot for that guy no um if you can't make it on the edmonton defense you might suck at <laughs> hockey there is a good chance you suck at hockey if the edmonton mm. orders look at a young defenseman and go net we can't use him mm. so to me that would be a a, a, a trade that makes sense Bruce is serviceable, but he's not a he's not a long term. He's been passed up by too many guys on this depth chart. Yeah. The reason he's playing here is because there are more important guys that need to play in Rockford. Right. Yeah, it doesn't mean that he's ahead of them in the organizational depth no. chart. He's ahead of them in the call up list. Right. Yeah, two different yeah, lists. You don't he's, he's, the guy you, he's the guy you play here because it's more important that the young guys stay right. around. If he comes up here and sucks, it doesn't matter. But right. you don't want to kill Ethan Del Mastro or Nolan Allen's confidence at this point. Exactly. Mm-hmm. All right, what do we got next, Sarah? Um, We got Reese Johnson. Oh. Another diehard. Oh, thanks, Reese. Right. Thanks, Reese, for the question. <laughs> Reese Johnson fan team. says, uh, what is your ideal 2024 free agency outcome? Reinhardt, Nylander, Brent Seabrook. Yes, yes. Brent Seabrook yes. is yes an unrestricted free agent. Finally, get him back. Yes. Yeah, bring him back. Bring him back. One day contract. Um, My dream is William Nylander. I mean, that would be. He's the top dog. I mean, yeah. he, he would make. Uh, he would own this freaking talent. He would, he would definitely be uh, a fun addition. I just I don't think he's leaving Toronto, um, which means then you go after Mitch Marner. Sure. Twenty twenty four. I don't know if I necessarily have a specific target I'm dying for, but you need to add a youngish, dynamic player, someone who's going to be here for six or seven years and be productive. Bill Kessel. Uh, you don't. It's, it's no no more placeholders. <laughs> no more guys that just you know. Uh, come here for a year and trade it's, it's time to add pieces uh steven stamkos windy city hack i wouldn't mind stamkos Love is one stamkos. of those two-year guys yeah. he's still i think he's still got a lot left in the tank 33 that's not that old he he's seems 30, like he's much at older the end of the season. yeah because he's been playing since he was 18 mm-hmm. he's um, missed a lot of time too yeah so yeah he's he's been he's been injury bitten before but but I mean, yeah I, 30 points I, uh, in 28 games this year he had four goals last night yeah, he's doing wonders on my fantasy team. He's uh, he's still very productive. That's one of those guys you want to give him a two year deal, fine. But I'm okay with Stamkos if he's not the biggest get. Yeah, Stamkos, like Stamkos, and, Stamkos, Stamkos and Nylander has yeah, signed me up. If you go and get Steven Stamkos and nothing else, I'm kind of like, eh, what are we really doing here? Yes, it does give 
but sure. it's, help, it's, that's but still it's that's not. still bridges uh, that is a big bridge right. in in the gap between uh rebuild and, and contendership but i want someone else someone who's going to be here beyond the bridge you know who's a free agent this summer tavo yep tavo teravinen he'll be 29 at the end of the year uh 19 points in 29 games he's also not going to break the bank no, he's got what is he making right now? Like five, five plus five point yeah. four million. Like, I, what does he get? He, seven? He's not going to get uh, not a not I'll much more than seven. that. Maybe maybe six, six seven, and a half, seven for five. Yeah, I, I think done. I, I mean, Bedard, uh, a guy to play with Bedard, I think Teravainen could could complement yeah, him pretty Stamkos well. You bring in Stamkos and Teravainen in the off season, and you have if you have a okay. healthy if you have a healthy Taylor Hall at the, end, at the beginning of next year, your top line is Hall, Bedard, Teravainen. That's a pretty. Now, I'll fuck line. with that. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm, but I have to say, like, I am no longer counting on Taylor Hall for anything. No, it, he is. Ju- he is but, just hurt. It's not his fault. I'm not blaming him for it. But it is what it is. He is an injured player. That's what you. I'm. I'm just saying when he when he is healthy to begin next yeah. season, if Teravine's on, on the team, that's your first line until somebody gets hurt. Right yep. until game but, three when Taylor Hall's hurt again. But I I think I think that's actually a a legitimate. I don't know what the talks between him and Carolina are on an extension if there are any. But if he's if a free agent, I think that's a guy that makes sense to to look at. Um, yeah, Nylander is the is is the dream right now for me. Stamkos is my number two. Tara Vine is my number three. Yeah. I agree. I'm actually lockstep with you on that list. As, I, as as far as guys who can come in and immediately give Bedard help, I think those three. I make also the think most Tara, sense. Like, Tara Vine is interesting too because, like we said, he's not going to break the bank, and he's a guy that can kill penalties. Mm-hmm. He's a guy that can, and and I think for a, a lot of us have made the Reichel comparison to Tavo a lot. And I know, like, the mentor thing is overblown, but, like, Tavo had the little struggles early in his career, too, and mm-hmm. was in Quenville's doghouse a lot. And, like, he, it, it, was, it was a struggle for him for, at the beginning. And maybe having someone like that who's been through it and has overcome it could be a good thing for Lucas Reichel because I don't think Reichel's going anywhere. I know he's restricted. If you want to find a silver lining in this, you could say, hey, I think Mario was you that mentioned it last night, like, you're not going to have to pay him now what you thought you were going to at the end of this year. If he had mm-hmm. put up 40 or 50 points, now you look at him and you go, bro. You well, get a one-year deal to prove that you're yeah, not this player. Right. You know, And maybe maybe they say, hey, well, we'll they can maybe get two years out of him and give him a little more than they wanted to. I don't know. There's they The Hawks have all the, fucks, have all the uh, or, cards now. Or with, with they Frankel. could do, <laughs> instead of the two-year prove it, they can say, okay, we'll give you that four-year deal now at a bargain. If you still believe he's going to be what you think he's going to be, yeah. maybe this is when you sign him that four-year deal on the very cheap. But that all depends That's on gotta, how... He's got to have a second half. Well, so it depends on how if, how much faith you have yeah. in him. But, yeah. you know, one way or the other, regardless how they sign him, they're going to get him cheaper than they originally planned. Unless he just completely blows up, and I don't see that happening right no, now. No, I agree with that. Carter Hart is an RFA? All right, what else we got, Sarah? You mentioned that yesterday, didn't you? We yeah. got yeah. good old AJ, hey. baseball kid. What you he doing says here? you have to put one non-hockey current Chicago pro sports player on the Hawks roster. Who is it and where do they play? I'm putting the super athletic Luis Robert Jr. at center and seeing how long he can go without hurting himself. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not putting that's Eli funny. on a hockey team, that's for sure. A non-current um, hockey player. Give me Jack Sanborn <laughs> playing defense. Do we have any Canadian? Who's Canadian? I don't. I don't know. Do we have any non-hockey playing Canadian? Is Dansby Swanson Canadian? No. 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 California he's from Chicago. Yeah, same thing. Um. He was a Georgia boy. I think. What about Question. Shohei Otani? He doesn't play in Chicago. It's got to be a Chicago athlete, right? Oh, I would like to see okay. Justin Fields on skates. That'd be fun. <laughs> I think he's athletic enough. He could play hockey, and he would be fast and big. That's a good answer. There, there's That's a fun one. Uh, Michael Soroka of the Michael White Soroka. Sox, Soroka. Sox is Canadian. Didn't I'm, he play like 20 years ago, Mike Soroka? That was Mike Soroka. A Soroka. Oh, he That's sucks too. Coach. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Another mid-White Manager. Sox pitcher. Can you um, imagine? What a concept. A mid-White Sox player. Yeah. No, the, don't think. Yeah, Justin Fields <laughs> on skates. Yes. Put him on Bedard's wing. So that's, that, that's a line right see there. See some end-to-end rushes and spin yeah. moves. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> All right. That, I think that's the winner. Yeah, Justin Fields. Love if, that. Uh, the Bears don't want you next year, the Blackhawks will take you. <laughs> True. We'll um, that. Our, our, 
All right, Soroka, mm. former goalie. His dad's yeah, I, he's got a pedigree. Maybe nice, he should have nice. stuck to hockey. Still, Justin can, Fields. Can he play instead of Arvid Soderblom? Can't be worse. No, he can't be worse. All right, let's do one more before our next break. Okay, this is from Matt Bus. Matt Bus. Matt Bus. Oh, the, I like this question. It's the if you had to pick one other team to cover other than the Hawks, who would it be? <laughs> in Chicago. I didn't. I think specify. it's just like yeah, in general. Who else would you cover if the Hawks weren't a team? <sighs> Why don't we do a hockey? Let's do an NHL and a non-NHL team. Okay. Let's make it fun. Other <sighs> NHL team I would come. See, for me, I'm picking a market. Right? I'm saying, where would I go where I would like to live? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's a good point. Denver is very tempting. Yeah. And they got a good team. Yeah. Um, Vegas would be a fun market to cover. I'm too old for that shit. I was going to say, even I think that's like too much. Um, <laughs> that's a lot. People well, that live there love it, though. Different, you know. It's it is weird to think about living in Vegas because right. most people don't live in Vegas. Air quotes. Yeah, like they live in a s- surrounding city. Right. Um, Seattle, Vancouver. Those are nice areas. Vancouver will be nice. Seattle, yeah. Those are those are yeah. those are good. The Pacific Northwest is nice. I think it's yeah. I, I would I would love to live in the Pacific Northwest. I went there like yeah. yeah you know I what? I think you just I think you just made my I think you picked my I'm picking Seattle. Yeah, Seattle or yeah. Vancouver would be good. Um, any one of those Northeast teams, you know, would be f- fun to cover just because, like, your road trips would be so easy. It's like yeah. Train yeah. rides, you know. Um, mm-hmm. you know uh, I, I don't want to say Boston because Boston is such a... It sucks to live there. A, it sucks to yeah, go around. It's, and same with, like, New York. Maybe the Devils. The Devils would be a fun team to cover because yeah. you're, yeah, but you're not you're living in, in New, New Jersey. York. Keep the whole East Coast. Quite I frankly. agree, but you know, it makes my it make it makes your travel for covering yeah, true. teams a lot easier. True, there's a lot of either hour train rides or 18 minute flights as opposed to, you know, going everywhere. Um, you, you only like two about. I, I think the I think covering the Dallas Stars would be fun. That'd be fun. Yeah, not but a lot I, of pressure covering the Dallas Stars. Yeah, and you're gonna get a good team. You're in. You're you know you're in yeah, Texas, which is a, Texas, a thing. I'm not sure I yeah. want to do that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying I, I about live, Seattle. I live closer like, to Austin than Dallas. You don't have to deal to with choose. fans that have been through a lifetime of crap in Seattle. No, right? like they're still fresh. They're yeah, still they optimistic. Have, like they yeah. don't have years and years of battle scars built up like a lot of Hawks fans do. Like it's you have an, a very optimistic and happy fan base. Happy to just have a team right now. If I if I could have a livable salary to cover a team, it's the San Diego Gulls. Well, yeah, there you go. Well, that would be my that would be my <laughs> other team, uh, non uh, NHL team. I would want to cover the San Diego Padres. Mm-hmm. That'd be nice because a that's a beautiful ballpark and it's San baseball Diego. in San Diego. Yeah. yeah, I would like to be. I don't know if I could. I don't know if I could do a baseball a season whale, though. That's man. a that's a that's a lot. long. It's a long. long. Season. I think like, an NFL season sounds like, really fun. The baseball fun. beat is like notoriously called like the divorce beat. Like yeah. that's how like <laughs> all your relationships are gone. Oh, Cody's yeah. just sad every day because <laughs> well, he has well, to Cody <laughs> keeps he does that to himself. He does it to himself. <laughs> he gets his hopes up over everything. He's got to learn to stop doing that. He gets so happy and then so sad. Yes. <laughs> I would like to cover. Uh, Canadian team that's not hockey. The, like, a, the Blue like Jays. a CFL team? So like a the second like a the, second the Rough Riders. Yeah, sure. Because <laughs> I'd like to, you know, like free health care would be nice. Sure. That's, uh, that's that sort good. of stuff. Yeah. I would love that. And uh <laughs> you know Raptors. And to have something where there's not as much pressure and focus on it. Like if you were to cover the Leafs, that would be chaos. That would nah, I wouldn't want to do that. Mm-mm. But you have to be that's that's a different animal. That's, that's yeah. a cutthroat beat because every you got so many people You've got to figure out a way to and Steve Simmons, yeah, yeah, and you got to deal with him and and Damian Cox and a lot of blowhards in yeah. Toronto. No thanks, no thanks. I would cover uh, like Damian Cox. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. no, you're right. Yeah, yeah. the Ottawa Senators <laughs> might be a fun beat. Would it? I don't know. I've never they been got, to Ottawa. They got a new owner and yeah, the new owner. Yeah, it's yeah not he, as he appears he appears fun to cover. Exactly. <laughs> they, it might not be that bad. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, uh, Padres would be fun. Or I wouldn't mind an NFL beat because you literally work seventeen. Like you got, you have the shortest of the seasons. Yeah, that's true. You have the longest off season, and you got a set week too. Right. Mm-hmm. Like there's no like there's a rhythm. There's no crazy like four games one week, two games the yeah. other week. Like it's every Sunday I'm at work for seventeen weeks yeah. or eighteen weeks or whatever. Yeah, and occasional Thursday and Monday, but still you've got a rhythm. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. what's hard about we. I love doing this, but like. 
the rhythm of the week is very hard to get a hold of yeah, sometimes. Isn't sure. that a, who was that? It's a Janet Jackson album, I believe. Rhythm of Rhythm, rhythm of the week. Rhythm Nation. Was that what was Rhythm of the Night? Was that Al Jabbar? We are the rhythm of the I don't night. know. I'd go to Denver. Yeah? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Come with. Denver would be fun. I've always said, yeah, even when I was graduating from college, I was always like, I could easily get a job in Colorado. I'd love that. I will say though, Denver is not what I thought. Like when I imagined Denver in my head. It was like pine trees and snow and mountains. Oh, like it was flat. not that. <laughs> no, that's, it was that's, not that that's at all. Aspen. You don't see <laughs> mountains till you drive over to like Boulder. Yeah, I the, think and, yeah. I would like to. Maybe I'll cover uh, Deion Sanders. Maybe that's my answer. Your job is just covering some Deion team, Sanders. Be the Brian uh, Windhorst. Some of team Deion in Sanders. Boulder or Aspen gonna, or something. It's not going to be a very long job. It's yeah, not fine. There long. Colorado Buffalo. No, no, go. just follow Deion Sanders. Yeah. yeah. No, I just, I, I just send me somewhere with mountains and pine trees. Okay. Oh, the Pacific Northwest. Has That's got it. That's my favorite landscape. Portland Winter Hawks. Here I come. Fine. Nice. <laughs> I don't think that would pay very well, but per- whatever. <laughs> Personally, I would cover the Wisconsin Badgers football. Why? <laughs> Why do that to yourself? I would love to live in Madison. I thought That's you were going to say the volleyball team. Are you like team basically at first? right there? <laughs> yeah, basically. I have to drive south <laughs> to get there, but yeah, basically. Hey, covering Wisconsin Badger football is probably an easy game story. Just copy and paste. Yeah, eighteen punts. Yeah, they did. They, <laughs> all, all the all the skill 12, all the skill position like players that. that you got excited about uh, underperformed, yeah. and you scored sixteen points. Sweet, yeah. I'm down. It's, it's like covering the Blackhawks with the post game show. It's pretty yeah. much the same every night. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're yeah. Team's supposed to win eleven games. They'll win seven. So. You talking about the Hawks? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, hey, we want to remind you that CHGO is supported by our great friends at Goose Island Beer Company. They are Chicago's beer since 1988. You're very familiar with the roster if you're listening to us. Thank you. You got the 312, the Full Pocket Pills. You got the new Beer Hug family, the Blackhawks Pale Ale, the Bull and Goose. So many great brews available right now. And hey, reminder, we have an event coming up on Tuesday with our friends at Goose Island. We're going to be out at Broken Barrel Bar, 2548 North Southport. Why is it so hard for me? North Southport. Because it's north and I know, south. it's hard yeah. to say. Contradiction. 2548 North Southport so in Chicago. Two long consecutive order. <laughs> <laughs> Broken north Barrel south. Bar. Uh, we're going to have a watch party, Hawks and Avs, and do a live post-game show. It's going to be a lot of fun. So come on out. Head over to allchgo.com, navigate to our events page, and then you're going to go to the event calendar Click on the event and then RSVP for us so we know you're coming. We want to get a general idea of how many people to expect. And uh, yeah, thank you. Salute. General idea. And uh, you can still show up last minute, but the RSVP just helps us kind of get a head count a little bit. So yeah. head over to allchgo.com and come join us out at uh, at the Broken Barrel on Southport. And make sure if you're what? not there, if you can't make it there, grab yourself an ultra-fresh brewery-exclusive beer at Goose Island's original brew house from their taproom on Fulton Street in Westtown, Goose Island Beer Company, Chicago's Beer. And if you need the perfect bag to store all your ice cold Goose Island and Varsity coolers, we'll have you set Beers. for game day and beyond <sighs> with the best beer. portable cooler and weekender duffel around. It's a very unique design. Uh, if you're a football fan, you're a Bears fan, the exterior has all the team colors. The bottom has a map of the city of Chicago or whatever team you get. Never so be lost. So in case you get lost, you know exactly where to yeah. go. The banner has some cool landmarks on it, like uh, the skyline. Yeah. And the lining is my favorite part. We'll have the city's food scene represented. So, of course, pizza, you've got pizza and hot, hot dogs. dogs on the inside of that this bag is, for This the is cool. They got all the, uh, I believe this retired is the retired numbers, numbers yep. on the side city here. flag, the Super Bowl you got 20. got that, Super Bowl 20. We've never, yeah. uh, we've never let that go. Um, yeah, very cool, very <laughs> Never unique. progressed beyond it. No, I mean, it's my favorite Bears joke of all time. How are Marty McFly and Chicago Bears fans alike? They're constantly <laughs> trying to go back to 1985. <laughs> uh, best joke ever because it's true. And uh, it doubles as a cooler. It's waterproof and double insulated. And a travel duffel. It fits mm-hmm. in your golf cart or can be used as carry-on luggage. Perfect holiday gift. They have 21 NFL teams represented, so they're perfect for any football fan in your life. Built to show up in style to a party or repping around town. Use it. You could use it as a gym bag. Take it to the Midtown Athletic Club. You could. Just make sure you wipe down the inside after you use yeah. it. Yeah. Head over to varsitycoolers.us and use the promo code CHGO at checkout, and you're going to get 10% off your order for one of these super cool varsity coolers. That is one nice bag awesome. out there. 
It is cool. very cool. Cool bag. Super high. I know if I don't know if it so shows we up in stuff the, our mail. It's really high quality. It is. It's great. Yeah. It's yeah. not gonna fall apart. No. No. It's beautiful. This will last you a while. Yes. It's a good bag. All right. What else we got here? Let's do Rizzy. Rizzy. Hey. That means charisma. Oh, I was thinking it was like Riz. Could be Rizzo. Yeah, Rizzy. Like, but that's where Riz comes from, Sarah. You should know this as the show you. It's Riz is like past my time. Oh, Riz, I'm thinking of charisma. Riz slang, Gen Z slang Riz. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? Oh, I don't Riz know. Riz is short for charisma. I don't know. I don't know. Your yeah. past. Anyways. I thought you were the young person on the show. I shouldn't know this stuff. Emma, apparently we need, Emma's teaching me things. Uh, apparently we, get, we need we to get Emma on, uh, on retainer. I'm so confused right now. <laughs> Tell us about Riz. <laughs> All right. Uh, Rizzy, 3X. That means he has three times the Riz. Uh, says, do you see the Blackhawks <laughs> still being a bottom seven team next year, but only with a little more help around Bedard? Sure. Depends on, <laughs> yeah. depends on who that help is. Like, as we were talking before, if William Nylander's here uh, with Bedard, with, let's say, Tavo. Frank Nazar, with <laughs> another, you know, yeah. s- a free agent, with a, another year of Kevin Korchinski, let's say Taylor Hall is healthy, let's say Andres Tennessee is healthy. You shouldn't be in the bottom set. Who's your goalie? That's the thing. Peter Mrazek. Hmm. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, they, sh- yeah. Let's see who they get. But Carter Hart. If they're still a bottom seven team, it's not the end of the world either. Uh, but you would hope to see some progression next year. Next year is the season where you want to see more wins. Next year, I want to uh, flirt with the idea of the playoffs legitimately. Yeah, that's that is my, like, that is my hope and expectation. Be like this year's like surprise team that nobody picked. That like, hey, it's Christmas and we're right there. Be like this year's Coyotes, um, sure, or maybe last year's. You know, ah, it might be too soon to say like last year's Sabers or or Senators. Like the Senators this year are supposed to be better. Yeah, and they're just <laughs> piddling down their legs every night, but. Yeah. I want to see like next year is not a playoff or bust year, but I want to. It, it should be better. There should be mm-hmm. more excitement, and you know, if you squint and some things go right, maybe at the trade yeah. deadline you're you're still within striking it, distance yeah. of a playoff spot. It just really depends on how the roster is constructed. Yeah, but if you get a point per game top six forward, and then you bring in another like solid. Middle six in a pinch top six Tavo type. And then you have all the growth you talked about. And Nazar is NHL ready, which is, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves on Nazar. We are all very excited about him as a prospect, but I don't think he is a certainty to be great right away or good right away. Like there's going to be growing pains with him just as there were with Reichel and other prospects before. So I don't think you're going to add... Nazar to the team, and he's going to have 60 points as a rookie. That would shock me, yeah. right? So whatever your top free agent is, you bring in another second-tier kind of a guy. You've got some development. Hall's healthy, like you said, at you. Then you've got two pretty solid lines, especially if Reichel starts to figure it out a little bit and looks anything like he looked at the end of last year. Yeah. Now you're talking a legit top six. And the bottom six has never been the Hawks' problem because if your third line then is, again – Felino, Dickinson, Anderson, which, you know, Kyle Davidson basically said today in Lazarus' thing, like, we just can't re-sign him yet because it's not January 1st. Yeah. It very much feels like Felino's going to be back. There's your third line, and then take any of these pieces and make them a fourth line. Yeah. Yeah, or you bring in new guys. Yeah, next year you should still see a bump, but, again, you're going to have more young players. You're going to have more first-year players. Yeah. And you're going to have the struggles that come with them. Um, so it will be better. I mean, as I've said for the last two, three years, or at least since this show started, the 25-26 season is the season where you should be like, okay, yeah. this is a team that are like this year's Red Wings, this year's, you know, what the Sabres should have been before they had the injuries, you yeah. know. This is, okay, now they're ready to take that next stop. And, like, 25-26 should be the season where you start thinking – Playoffs. We should be a playoff team. Because, yeah, because next year's team is probably going to be younger than this year's team. Probably. And what I'll say about next year, though, whether or not they even flirt with a playoff spot, is they're going to be a hell of a lot more interesting because there's going to be more guys here that matter. Just as this year has more guys that matter than last year, 
Next year will be even more. And the year after that will be even more as these pieces start to fill in and populate the the roster that's going to contend eventually, hopefully. Every year we get closer to that, the more exciting it's going to be. The next two summers have a lot of really intriguing free agents, and the Blackhawks have nothing but money to spend. And let's not forget, they're very likely getting a top three pick in this draft, Mm -hmm. and all three top picks from this last draft are playing in the NHL right now and playing pretty damn well. Yeah, I don't think that's the expectation for this year's class, but maybe if you get number one and you get Macklin Celebrini, maybe he's on an NHL roster to start the season. Maybe. We'll I think Eiser, I think Eiserman goes to college. I think most of the other guys are probably a year away. Yeah. But, but I mean, it, you could win the draft two years in, in a row. Agency, and, uh, you know, we can have a better idea. But definitely not expecting any kind of postseason run next season. If the, if the team is – if the team is built – through free agency to be in the bottom seven, I I will be slightly disappointed because I I oh yeah yeah because what you're saying. because I think because of this summer who should be available I think if you come away this summer without a splash it's gonna it's gonna kind of suck I agree yeah it's this you need to go for more than just placeholders this summer and this will be Davidson's first real test in. Actually going out and winning a bidding war and convincing a player to play here. Attracting a player. It's different from trading for the rights to a guy and then convincing them to stay. Yeah. Which is what he, yeah. Here's four million reasons to come here when nobody else is going to get one and a half. Exactly. But it will be an easier sell now that you got a, you got a top six winger is like, I go play next to 98 for the next five or six years. Mm. Sign me up. Right. Because he's going to make me a shitload of money on the back end of that be it in Chicago or somewhere else. Yeah. So very very tempting. All right, let's let's try to rifle through a few. I know we got a lot more still. This is a fun one okay. from Landon. Oh, it's no roids. Mm-hmm. What? If the CHGO Blackhawks crew was the GM of the Blackhawks in the World Junior DM, Championships, nice. called asking you to loan Bedard to Team Canada. What's the asking price? Ten. <laughs> Give some fun. Ten answers. billion dollars cash. Yeah. After I, I stopped laughing for an hour and a half. No. Yeah. All the maple syrup in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Lifetime supply. Yes. That's start. Yeah. Uh, yeah There's no. nothing. Nothing. There, you, you can, a trillion dollars. You couldn't get me to let. I draw an there. American flag on my ass and take a picture of it and send it to him. <laughs> 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 Not like, happening, my friend. Like Bart Simpson yeah. in Australia. Don't tread on me. Yeah, don't tread on me. Exactly. Yeah, yeah there's, nothing. Not, there's nothing. Not a, not a nope. chance in hell. Yeah. All right, what do we got next, Sarah? It's crazy that he could still play in the next two Mm -hmm. World Juniors. Yeah, (laughs) really. Uh, Two girls, one puck says, what do you see with Soderblom and the backup goalie position? He has the second worst save percentage in the NHL and is 4-22-3 and in his NHL career. If you think he has a future as an NHL goalie, do you send him down to build some confidence? But if that's the case, who do you call up? We talked about this a little bit last night. I'm saying... You just have to you have to do something because he's bad, and I don't think Jackson Sauber's a goalie of the future here at all. But you just have to do it. You just have to do it for even if it's a couple games to get uh, Soderblom to reset because he is completely lost right now. But Luke does not seem concerned at all after the game. He said, "Oh, you know, he's a confident kid. He'll move on." Okay, I'm glad he can move on to the next game. But if the next game's another shit show, mm-hmm. he's definitely got a lot of experience of moving on from bad games. Yeah. yeah. Too He's much mastered experience. It. Yeah, um, I yeah I think <coughs> he either has to just ride out this season and figure it out. Which good luck to you. Um, I think sending him down and bringing up Jackson Stauber needs to be the move. If you if you have any hope for him to be an NHL goalie, he's got to figure out what's going on with his game because it's not because it's not just it's not just that this team is is out talented every night and outworked most nights and he doesn't get any goal support it's not just that no it is it it is mechanical there there are mechanical problems with him in that that we didn't see last year when he was losing games and you're just like well yeah when you face 49 shots and you stop 45 of them and you get one goal in support sure you're going to lose you're going to lose those games but at least you know he's getting you know he's he's putting out as much effort and and good a good of a performance as he can given the circumstances. This isn't this season. It isn't even that. 
It's it's it, it's giving up rebounds. It's being out of position. It's he's got to mechanically fix his game, and he's in. If you send him down to Rockford, you break up Jackson Stauber. It's not gonna it's not gonna be any different. Jackson Stauber is not gonna fix this team, but at least it's gives Soderblom an opportunity to get some games where, you know, you're in the AHL. It's a developmental minor league. You can maybe work on have some stuff. time to work on things. Yep. And sure, you probably take some starts away from from Juke Camarazzo, which which hurts. But well, they're it's it's for a pur- now. It's for a purpose, right? Yeah, yeah. But it's for a purpose with Soderblom because he's supposed to be in the NHL this season, and if he can't be, I I, I don't know what what else you do with him. And you don't want to say like, oh, give up on him. He's 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 cooked. But every night that he's out there, he's giving you less and less confidence that oh maybe he like. Does he have an initial future? Every time I watch him, I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I don't that, think so. That Belmar goal last night was horrible. Which one? The first one? The, the kind of wraparound one in the third yeah, period. Like, uh, oh yeah. yeah, that was that was a, that was a goal where you're like, yeah, this guy's phoning it in at this yeah. point. Yeah, I mean, they lost. They, they gave up seven goals. Two of them were tough luck, but that's that's five that you still have to answer for. <laughs> you could tell when. They finally put Mrazek in in the third period, with like thirteen minutes to go. He was like muttering under his breath, yeah. like this mother. F- Come on, man! I'm supposed to have a night off. Yeah, like, <laughs> with God, my not even supposed with to be my, here. I'm even supposed to be here. My today. groin that's always hurt. Yeah, yeah it's. Oh, well, Mrazek had a hundred percent save percentage last did. night. Good job, four star. Yep. All right, Sarah. Let's do another one here. Okay. Oh, we I probably got a lot it. left. Yeah, there's a lot. Oh, this one. All right. Revier for Norris. <laughs> All right. It's Is there any package the Blackhawks could create to fetch a first like last year? Yes, Connor Bedard. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to do a first, uh, you're going to get a first, it's because you're taking on yeah. a bad contract. And I, I'm, I'm kind of over that. And also, the, the best options for take on a bad contract for a first don't seem to be available anymore. Besser and, and Garland in, yeah. in, in Vancouver were like the two yeah, best I, options for I want it. Nothing to do with Jack Campbell. And you don't know, you don't want Jack Campbell. Pick. Nope. No. Plus, Edmonton, I don't think, is in a position where they should be trading away first round picks. Uh, they, no, they could, they they're losing re- somebody. Yeah. So, uh, no, I, I'm, I'm kind of over the taking on bad contracts to get. To, you've got two first round picks this year. You got two first round picks next year. If it, if a team comes calling, you listen. But I don't think you can actively go out. And, and there's no one on this roster right now that you're going to trade for a first round pick that you're not willing to not trade. A, not straight up. No. Right. No. No. There are guys that can fetch you first round picks, but you're not trading any of those guys. No, that would be counterproductive. Yeah. All right. Let's do Dan's. If uh, Tampa's pick ended up being top ten this year, do you think Tampa would surrender it or take their chances with their pick being in 2025 being unprotected? I think they would. I don't know. I, I think, think they'd they probably worry. prefer that 2025 unprotected because they're eventually they're going to start falling. I don't think we have to worry that they're going to be in the top 10 this year. But if it were, uh, I think that they would probably use that pick. And then 2025 is unprotected. I, I don't I don't know why you would say, no, take our pick now. Like The only I, thing would be, do they think in 2025 they're going to be so far out of it that it could be a potential lottery pick? I mean, right now, Tampa's in the league standings are 15th in the league. Yeah. So, And if they're going to lose Stamkos this summer and Victor Hedman is two years older in 2025, eh, I don't think it's as cut and dry. I see what you're saying, Mario, because you, you're not guaranteed anything. And if you're like, well, we're getting a top 10 pick, let's just take it because we know in two, three years we're going to have another player we can add to begin the next generation of Lightning. And maybe you don't have that massive gap like the Hawks are having. Uh-huh. That's tempting too. So, I I don't know. They're it's, tied for the last wild card spot right now. Like I don't think they're falling into yeah. where we have to worry about them. So, say they miss the playoffs by one. What how, what's the farthest they could move up? They can't. They they if they win the lottery, they don't get number one, right? No, they move up four spots. Yeah, so they can't move into the top ten. Yeah. So unless they're we, unless they're fourteenth or worse, you're not worried about it. Yeah, I don't think we have to worry about it. I I. I Still think they're a playoff team. Yeah. And even if not, they're going to miss, barely miss, and they'll pick 11th or 12th best scenario. So I I think we're – I don't think we have to worry too much about that. All right. Um, 
I think we have time for one more question, or did sure. you want to do two more questions? Let's, 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 we can do two. Let's do two more. Okay, this one's pretty fun. I like right. this one. From Alexander, he's a diehard. He said, the Bears have Braggs, the Bulls have Peck and Dave, the Cubs have Cody. Who's the Hawks CHO meatball? Mario. <laughs> totally. No. <laughs> I think we... Uh, I think Mario we- gets the most mad uh, in real time. Like I, I've, I've seen him like <laughs> get, yeah. get like watching a game, get up and spike a hat or like grab his face or whatever. He's the most passionate. We don't right? have yeah. any. This beat does not have a, a Braggs or a Cody. No, we don't. But we kind of no. sh- we kind of share that role. I think. Yeah. We we each have our meatbally moments. Of course. <laughs> we're not we're not like total meatballs. That's actually what we're called. The meatball, meatball moments. moments. <laughs> meatball moments. That's that sounds like a nice off season uh, <laughs> off season segment. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, I do agree that like. Instant reaction, Mario is definitely the one that gets the most upset. The it's, most some, it's something about this chair, I think. It's, it's, it could be. Yeah, it's, That's the meatball seat, yeah, I guess. So. It is. You're in the meatball. Mm, meatballs. <laughs> are there any leftovers down here? <laughs> <laughs> Those are Bragg's meatballs. Yeah. Those All right, one more. Right, last one. All right, let's do this one. Uh, we kind of address both these. Um, does Reichel need to go down? Uh, I would say yes. yes. Kyle Davidson, with, in his interview with Lazarus, addressed this too. He said, concern is probably not the right word. We definitely expected more. And then when asked if sending uh, Reichel to Rockford is a consideration, he says, I don't think we're there yet. There are still some things we'll try to have him work through at the NHL level first. Quote, we're not at the Rockford point right now. And that was before yesterday's game. I don't think anything happened with Reichel in yesterday's game that would have changed that opinion. If anything... He flashed a few more times yesterday than he had in a while. Yeah, we, he got the promotion up to the top line, Yep, um, which was partially merit-based in-game. Um, yeah, I, I I, think he needs to, like Soderum, needs to figure out what's going on with his game. And if, But I think also like Soderblom, it seems like from the organizational standpoint, you figure it out at the NHL or you don't figure it out at all. All right, do we'll, we want to do we'll one more? Happens. We'll do one more. One more? Let's do one the more. The last one we have, I think, is a long one. That's fine. Is this the last one? Yeah, this is the last Holy one. Holy moly. Yeah, it's oh, from Hush one's... Money. Yeah. Oh, let's see it. Whatever. It was, uh, it's the last one. Let's get this one. This one was DM'd to us. Uh, and feet pics on there. That's there's, weird. It <laughs> uh, says, I know you guys don't want to look ahead to the 24, 2024 draft yet. A uh, rebuild report would say otherwise. Outside <laughs> of Bedard, it's the only thing to get excited about right now. That being said, we're looking at the top three or four pick this year at worst. Can you rank your top five prospects in regards of how the Hawks might draft? Uh, it names a couple of guys. I wrote about this in, briefly in, I believe it was the, not the latest edition, two editions ago of the Rebuild Report. So if you're a diehard, uh, go and check that out, allchjo.com. But my top five wish list right now with the Blackhawks are at... Uh, in the draft lottery, obviously, number one, Macklin Celebrini. He is, you know, uh, being compared to a guy like Patrice Bergeron. That would be wonderful. That would be nice. Uh, Cole Eiserman is number two. He is uh, a guy that is, we talk about having the killer instinct to score goals. He has it. Hyper. He has it at the uh, at, at the junior level. Would love to see him uh, wreck the league with Bedard uh, on a top pairing. That would be great. Uh, my number three is Artem Levshinov right now. Big rangy offensive defenseman playing at Michigan State. Uh, I think the Blackhawks can't get uh, can't have too much length and mobility and offensive production from the blue line. Sam Dickinson is my number four. He is playing with the London Knights, I want to say. Um, again, big, rangy, more defensive-focused defenseman. Uh, he is a left shot on the left side, whereas Levshinov is a right shot on the right side. So Levshinov might actually fit the team's needs better. Uh, and my number five is Caden Lindstrom, big fucking guy in the WHL, like real tall, real thick for, for a junior player, uh, down the middle player, um, something the Blackhawks don't have. Hey, so if you're I, going I by like NHL names, Caden Lindstrom is the one that's the most that's hockey ish name. Like Not oh cool. well he's guaranteed to be good. Look Cole at Cole Eiserman. Uh, that's pretty, pretty good too. Pretty close. Not the same spelling, but pretty close. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Get the Dickinson, and then when when Stephen puts two Dickinsons on, yeah, it'll be okay right again. Yeah. Two Dicks. Wow. We get Bonnie Burns. There was a here. second part of that question. Uh, it was about uh, Philip Kurashev. Could he be a second line guy? Sure. Sure. Maybe. Uh, Maybe. I mean, on a on a legit contender, like a, like a team that's trying to win a cup, 
I don't think so. Can he be a second liner eventually down the road in Chicago here? I mean, Maybe. if you sign Tavo and Taylor Hall's back, no. You don't think he would play on the second line? Uh, he plays on the right side, so yeah, maybe. Yeah, you get the you get the AA uh, Kur- Kurishev. Michael Athanasiu Michael line, Kurishev yeah. is your second line next year, maybe. If you if you say you got sure Hall next and year, Bedard sure. and Ter- Ter- if I'm trying Tavo to win a cup though, I don't, Hall I don't, Bedard Nylander. If I'm trying to win a cup, he's my Michael Frolik. Yeah, I don't think he's he's not my Mary. I don't think so. he's a top six guy, but he doesn't mean he can't turn out to be that way. Sure, he's I love the guy. Cool, I, I hope he turns out great, but I'm not. Keeps, if he keeps doing what he's doing this year carries it over into next year he's a young guy I would, there, there's still steps to be taken sure i'm just saying if i'm it. kyle davidson and i'm drawing my roadmap to competitiveness i'm not just putting uh philip kershev at or w2 in sharpie no 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 but he could get yeah. there but he's a guy that sure. can definitely you can put there if you have to and right you'll be fine well it's you know you could do that with versteeg back in the day if right. hosa or sharp was hurt and like that's that's part of yeah. kershev's uh attractiveness as a player is that he's versatile. You could yeah. play him. In would you call spots. him a Swiss army knife? I would. Call, I have called him yeah. a Swiss army Brilliant. knife. <laughs> Brilliant. Is the roadmap to success um, passed through the bridge to Comezzo? It do, yes, it does. Okay. And it's a rickety bridge right now. <laughs> you better be careful. It's that bridge that keeps getting hit by buses in uh, yes. wherever that is. Exactly. All right. Tell us where to work out so we can go home. Uh, the Midtown Athletic Club. All right. Cool. All right. Well done. <laughs> they have four Shelby locations in the Chicagoland uh, area, including Palatine, Bannockburn, Willowbrook, and in the heart of Bucktown and Lincoln Park. That's the Midtown Athletic Club and Hotel. And uh, if you're a single person, you can get a membership there. If you have a family with kids, you can get a membership there. If you're looking to make a lifestyle change, guess what? You can get a membership there. And if you're looking to deep dive into your holistic wellness journey, you can get a membership there and the, all of your needs are going to be met with all of their amenities, uh, wet and dry saunas, premium locker rooms, amazing indoor and outdoor pools, hot tubs, uh, tennis courts. They got basketball courts. Uh, they have everything that you would see at a usual gym, uh, but things that you wouldn't see at a usual gym, like yoga, boxing, spin classes, group fitness, uh, cross training. They got like a 25 yard football field. You can do a bunch of different workouts on. Uh, Midtown Athletic Club. It is awesome, top notch. Head over to midtown.com slash CHGO, find out more, and tour the Midtown Athletic Club location nearest to you. And our partner at Ray Chevrolet is having their biggest sale of the year right now. Prem? Wrong, wrong store. Chevy? Yes, that's the one. Right. Chevy's. <laughs> uh, make, make your way to Ray Chevrolet. If you would have just waited two more seconds, you would have gotten your answer. That's what I wanted to say. Jump the gun. <laughs> <laughs> make your way to Ray Chevrolet on Route 12 in Fox Lake to join in on the savings for their model year and sales event. As one of the top-selling Chevy dealers in the Midwest, you'll always be able to shop one of Chicagoland's largest Chevy inventories. But right now, they're trying to make room for the incoming 2024 models so their current inventory must go. Plus, you'll find the Get perfect out. tailgate vehicle at Ray Chevy hey. because they have over 100 new Silverados in stock. And that's not all. Get 0% financing with $0 down and zero payments until spring of 2024. That's all the zeros. Or save over $3,000 on a new Chevy Blazer, 4000 on an Equinox, or over $10,000 on a Silverado. And to top that off, they are pricing over 125 vehicles under $20,000. Seriously, guys, can pricing get more affordable? I know everyone loves the word free. I know I do. And that's what you'll get this month at Ray yeah. Chevrolet and Fox Lake, a free oil change. And all you need to do is mention CHGO when scheduling your oil change online or on the phone. You better hurry. This exclusive offer ends December 31st. Visit Ray Chevrolet in person in Fox Lake or RayChevrolet.com to get your model year end savings. They've been serving the community since 1963. Find new roads. That's a All long time. Right. We are back Sunday. Post game show. Hawks and Canucks. Canucks. 2 p.m. Oh puck boy. drop. <laughs> That's no. the Anthony Beauvillier revenge game. Sure. sure. And yeah. the Sam Lafferty revenge game. Who wants revenge more? I think they're both going to probably get some revenge. But uh, probably more for Vancouver. This one yes. could be that good. Yeah, but you know what? 
how often do the Blackhawks play up to their competition? And well, down to so their they lose three to one instead of eight to one? Hey, that's we'll an see. improvement. Yeah. yeah, we'll take it. Just don't get blown out. My family's going to be there. Oh, boy. You can't expose uh, CC to a beating like it's, that. You get, what? <laughs> like a hockey beating. Come on. Jesus, Jay. That's not what I meant. Think, think you about your that's sentences. Not what I meant. <laughs> yeah, a defeat. There you go. Is that better? Yeah, right. she probably won't watch most of the Luke, game Luke listens, so have the boys play harder for Mario's. Family. Yes, he does. Yeah. We know uh, Kyle listens, too, so hi, yes. Kyle. All right, we're going to wrap things my, up. My biggest takeaway from, from her being at the game is hopefully she becomes a hockey gift like that little Penguins kid 10 years ago. Going, yeah, monetize that. See her do that. You know, yeah, you, yeah, absolutely. Get some cotton candy. Ice cream. Sugar. That kid was definitely sugar, sugar fuel. Sugar up, yeah. That's my favorite well, she one. She will is be the, skipping naps. Have so. you, the, the cotton candy girl is my favorite oh, baseball yeah. meme where she's yeah. like ramping up. You she's see like... the sugar hit her veins. <laughs> yes. That's all done. Yeah. All right. We're back that day, Sunday. Be with us. And we are powered by ComEd. It's easier for your business to switch to electric vehicles. Easier than ever. Learn more at ComEd.com slash clean. Thanks to Sarah for running the show today. The mailbag shows are always a big pain in the ass because there's a lot of graphics and everything, so we appreciate her help. We'll talk to you Sunday on the CHGO Blackhawks podcast.